is reflective consciousness, perception, understanding, and proper judgment. To be transformed by a new mind means commitment. To be transformed by a new mind means commitment. We don't understand the value of commitment anymore. As a matter of fact, cell phone operations and companies now have made it so where their main slogan is no commitment. So now we live in a culture in which if everybody runs when you don't have to sign a contract, when you don't have to be bound by legal terms, when you don't have to be bound by trusting someone, a commitment is made whenever you have full trust in somebody. But because we can't even trust our own family members, we don't understand the power of commitment. Now I want you to come this way. I have some scriptures I want you to read. To be transformed by a renewed mind means commitment. Look at someone say, you got to be committed to somebody. <laughs> Both to the kingdom and God's proven acceptable will. <laughs> commitment literally means that I have made the decision to be in covenant with God. Covenant means longevity. I don't just come and shake the pastor's hand and don't give God my heart and walk outside and do everything else I want to do. But it means that I'm committed to God so that even when I'm in high school, even when I'm in middle school, even when I'm on my job, I have a commitment to God so somebody knows that God is committed to me. Yeah, yeah. Types of minds. Different types of minds. Turn to Romans 8. 6 through 7. Romans 8. 6 through 7. Romans 8. 6 through 7. Romans chapter 8. Verses 6 through 7. We got the rest of the week to shout. We can learn tonight. Look at someone and say, you're going to learn something tonight. Now y'all said it. I didn't. So let's get ready to get in this thing. Romans chapter 8. Verses 6 and 7. Now. Uh, part of the I didn't bring the notes tonight because you can get the notes online. I, I told the Pastor Allen about it. And you can get all the notes that I'm teaching you tonight right on our resource page. So you can find everything, everything that I just mentioned, everything that you mentioned for the rest of this message is right online. That way we can save a little paper and go green. All right. Romans 8, 6 through 7. Do you have it? Amen. Go ahead. For to be cornerly minded. For to be what? Cornerly minded. Read. Is dead. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is an enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. Read that last part again. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Neither indeed in thee. Romans 8, said right there, Romans 8, 6 to 7, gives an understanding of a Greek word called sarkikos, which means the nature of the flesh. We have yielded to such materialism because, as a matter of fact, even right now, somebody could be texting and aiming doing worship. Because we are fighting in a the carnal mind literally means that I am designed to be connected directly to whatever I want to do. And I'm not submitted to anybody. And I love what my uncle always said. He said, either you are a son or a child of God or you are a child of the devil. And that comes with a carnal mind. The second thing is an anxious mind. Luke, 20, Luke 12, 29. Luke 12, 29. Luke 12, 29. Luke 12, 29. Anxious mind. Luke 12, 29. You have it, say amen. You got it. You got it. What's up, Mike? Make sure you got it. I want you to read it. Yeah, yeah, look at it. Make sure you got it. Luke 12, 29. 
What does it say? And see not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of a doubtful mind. Verse 30. For all these things do the nation of the world see after, and your father knoweth ye have need of these things. And verse 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall, shall be unto you. Luke 12, 29. Gives an understanding of doubtfulness. 